to another episode of Planet Hunters Coffee Chat. I'm your host, Cassie Prolongo, and joining me today is, of course, the amazing, absolutely stellar Nora Eisner. Hey, Nora. Hi, Cassie. Good to see you. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. How are you doing? I'm very well. Got my coffee, tea for today. I have my little Nevada theme going on. So, of course, hope that you guys are joined, and Nora has hers as well. Her yeah, mine says born to be magic. So <laughs> this is the theme we're going forward for today. <laughs> I love it. Perfect. That's the vibe that we want. That's the vibe we're cultivating. So I hope that you're joining us with a coffee or tea or beverage of choice at home as we take you through our magical journey today. Um, so to briefly recap, we have done episodes about uh, resources. So we talked a little bit about uh, Exofop and Mast and Sinbad. Nora did an excellent job of really taking us through that and doing some preliminary research on it. So go and have a look at those episodes if you haven't had a chance. We also talked a little bit about our mini series with intro to uh, coding. So that was a lot of fun. And I hope that you had a chance to go through and take a look at that. And we'll show you at the end of this episode where you can also take a look on our website and go through and see the tutorials that Nora uh, showed us. And you can download them themselves at uh, yourselves at home. Um, and then our recent more more recent ones is that we talked a little about orbital periods, didn't we, Nora? So we were determining about what these mean, how do you get them, um, how to measure properties of planets. I'm trying to remember, is there anything else that I'm missing from that? The orbital periods was our more recent one that we talked about. Yeah, and the radius. How did and the radius. Yes, for off, off the planet. So yeah, so we determined, uh, we went a little bit into our mini series about the science of exoplanets. So we hope that you had fun watching that. I certainly had fun. Uh, and Nora is, as you've known, she is a great teacher, great instructor, and it's just a lot of fun doing these episodes with her. So now we have been looking at your comments and your questions. We're gonna talk a little bit about um, something that's based on one of the questions actually. And I'm gonna go ahead and read the question out loud that we got. So it said, hi, on Planet Hunters Test Talk, I often see some more experienced users using the term background flux, okay, not okay, etc. I'd love to find out how to check the B flux by myself. Thanks in advance. Well, thank you for sending that over because uh, in talking to Nora about this, she said this would be great for us to do a little bit of a mini series about that, about false positives. So this is what we're going to talk about today. So Nora, I'm going to hand it over to you because this seems like a very important thing that we should be talking about. Yeah, this came at the perfect time. This looking at false positives and background flux comes into that is really, really important. Um, so we keep saying false positives. So we'll do, first of all, we should probably start by clarifying what that means. So false positives yes. is something that looks like it could be a planet signal, but actually isn't a planet signal. And it could be due to something else. Um, common false positives are, for example, a background signal, which is what we'll look at today. Uh, it could be due to the test satellite moving slightly, which causes kind of a spike in, in the flux or a dip in the flux, which could also be mistaken for a, a transit signal. Um, or even you can have, those are kind of more instrumental kind of false positives, but you can also have astrophysical false positives. So for example, mm -hmm. we're looking for a transiting planet, but you could, instead of having a transiting planet, you can have two stars going around one another somewhere in the background of what you're actually looking at. And that would also be a false positive, but that would be an astrophysical as opposed to an instrumental false positive. Okay. Um, so yeah, really important to rule those out because of course, when we find a signal, we want to make sure that it is, it is a real signal and it's not um, a false positive. So this background one is a really good one to start with. Um, and I have prepared a little notebook um, to, to kind of guide us through this and to help us maybe visualize what we're actually talking about. Um, so this is kind of one of these notebooks which will be available online and you can look out afterwards. I'm not going to code live. Um, I make a lot of spelling mistakes when I do that and there's a lot of words in this. So I'm, <laughs> we're going to avoid that for today. Um, so instead, I'll just, I'll just talk you through the code and we'll kind of look through the results and see, see what it does and, and what it kind of spits out at us. Um, so what we can see here is we're using, I should say, we're using light curve again, just to plot this. So you can do this, of course, by yourself as well. But what we're just using or what we're plotting here is the image around the target. So you can see this is pixel. So I think it's 11 by 11. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. No, it is 11 by 11 pixels. And yep. um, for each pixel, you can see kind of how bright that pixel is on average, where a brighter color, so the yellow that you see in the center here is higher flux, so higher photons, more light, it's brighter there. That's the target that we're looking at, that's where it is. Um, and in red, kind of that crossed 
um, kind of red outline and cross boxes, that's the aperture that was used to extract the light curve. So we've been looking at light curves, we've been looking at kind of the summation of light that falls within these red boxes. So this is kind of the aperture that the tests or the automated pipeline used to extract this particular light curve. So we can look at this light curve by scrolling down, I've plotted it, you get this. If you sum this up over time, for each one of those images, you sum it up and then plot it over time, you get this beautiful light curve. And this is a light curve that we've seen before. Now, if we're looking at the background flux, we want to not look at any of the kind of light inside of these red boxes. And instead we wanna look at the light around it um, and kind of see what is happening in the background, just to make sure that that signal that we're looking at is only happening within these boxes, within yeah. the aperture on target, and that it isn't happening all the way kind of around it or somewhere else in the image. All right, I hope that made sense. Um, that does make sense. So, and you go down to the the uh, the light curve and everything. It's can you? See, yeah, okay. So you can kind of see some of the blips and everything. Although it does look, it's kind of hard to see. But that's all of the flux. That's the background, right? No, this isn't the background yet. So this is just the light curve. Oh, that's um, just the light curve. Okay. We haven't plotted the background yet. So this is the light curve that we see. This is off the target. This is this kind of summation of the light within that red aperture that we just saw. And you can see the transit event here. So now we'll, you were jumping the gun a little bit. We're now going to scroll Sorry. Down. Now look at the background <laughs> flux. <laughs> I got excited, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good. That's, that's what we want. Um, oh, there the magic. background flux. Gotcha. Okay. Oh, okay. Okay. So now we're, instead what we're doing is plotting the background flux. Um, so within this entire notebook, I will always plot the background flux in blue so that we can distinguish between the background flux and the actual light curve. Um, so you can see already as just a kind of the first thing that might pop out is that there are really large scale variations and large scale trends in this. Um, these are very high numbers. It goes down all the way to zero. The flux goes all the way up to 50,000. So there's just large scale variations that go across kind of these 27 days of data. So the background is doing lots of wild things. That is nothing to worry about, but it's just what the background does. But we're not worried about things on a large scale. What we want to look okay. at is what the background flux is doing around the time of that transit event. So instead of looking at this kind of entire kind of background flux um, over time, over that sector, we can scroll down and we've defined here the transit event or the time of the transit event. And we've cut out um, kind of the data just around that transit event. So we've done plus and minus two days. So we wanna see what is happening at the time of the transit event and plus and minus two days. So just cutting out a small section. And when we do that, we see mm. that it's kind of that trend, you can see it, kind of, it's much more smooth. There are no big spikes like we saw when it was across the kind of large scale. But this isn't the most useful plot. Let's actually look at them both at the same time. So at the top here, we have the flux. This is the light curve. You can see the transit event there. I've highlighted in orange the time or the midpoint approximately of the transit event. And down here in blue, you can see the background event, no, the background flux, sorry. And what you can see is that background flux is quite smooth. There are no spikes in the background flux. Yeah, it wobbles a bit. There's a bit of a downward trend. That's nothing to worry about. What we're looking for and making sure that there isn't is a kind of spike in the background flux at the time of the transit event, because that would indicate that there is something happening in the background and uh, it could be an asteroid passing through the field of view. It could be a number of things. Um, but in this case, we don't see any of that. So this would be an example of a good case. Mm -hmm. But to show you what I mean when I say a spike in the background, we will also look at an example of one of those. Um, so we will scroll down again a little bit in this notebook. Um, so can, can I interrupt really quick, Nora? Yeah. So that interrupt. So um, so that is a good case. So that means that that is a potential candidate then for an exoplanet because there's nothing in the background in the um, in the okay. Yes, Sorry, exactly. I'm catching up slowly. Sorry, the coffee starting to catch. <laughs> starting to no, kick no, no, in. You clarify. <laughs> okay, so but that's what that means. So that's what. Okay, gotcha. Hundred yeah. percent. So that Game was a, a good candidate, potential candidate. Um, gotcha. I will show you a bad candidate though. Um, sometimes they're very obvious. Uh, so for example, this this is uh, we just entered the tick ID. We're using Lightcurve to download the data. We're, we're binning it. We've done this before in, in some of our previous episodes. And you can see, so this is just the light curve. And you can see this looks like it could be a transit event. Yeah. I mean, it has like the typical kind of look and feel that you would see and things that we've yeah. looked at before. Yes. Mm -hmm. 
uh, zoom in on that. You can see that uh, a little bit better. Um, but again, we'll do the same thing that we just did before. We're going to plot the, set, the background flux um, kind of on the same figure as the, the light curve around the time right. of that event. And this time you can see that there is almost oh. a mirror image of that, of that signal that we're seeing in the light curve, but we're seeing it in the background flux. So this shows that this is Ooh. a false positive. It is something that's happening in the background and it's just appearing in our light curve. But we now know that this is not on target and this is not a real signal. Ooh, so this, I mean, this is incredibly, <laughs> you need to use this, I mean, basically as an astronomer to ensure that this what you're getting is real. So what 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 would something like this be potentially if you see this in the background is the background flux? Uh, this could, for example, be an asteroid moving through the field mm -hmm. of view. Um, when we look at some more false positives, kind of diagnostic plots, which we'll do uh, in the next couple of episodes, I can show you there are other plots that show asteroids moving through the field more clearly, and and they're really fun. Wow. So um, wow. we'll probably come back to this. We can come back to this exact target. Um, cool to check whether Put a pin it in it for next time. Yeah, love it. Okay, so that this would not be a good candidate then. Toss it no, out. no, so okay. we would rule this one out. Um, just some other examples here. Again, it looks like a transit event. When we look at the background flux, we can see again, it's kind of almost mirrored this event here. This is the kind of transit, transit like event, we should say not transit event. Um, and yeah, it's again mirrored in the background. So that's not what we want. And just a final example, I could show you lots of these. We have lots of false positives. Um, this will be the last one I show you, I promise. Um, and again, there it's mirrored. You see a spike in the background flux. So this, these would all be ruled out as, as false positive candidates. Oh man. So it's important to go through and to do this and to learn how to do this because you're gonna be looking at this quite a lot, it seems like. <laughs> False positives are, I mean, they're exciting to see, okay, cool, oh, maybe I have something, but that determines that it's just a false positive. But that's okay, because this is good to, we have to continue to rule things out, and it makes it all the more exciting when you do get um, a positive that happens to be an actual exoplanet candidate. So, so that's good. Okay, cool. Anything else, Nora, that you want to go over in this particular episode? Um, yeah, I just want to say that, so we will be making, I haven't really gone through the code of this. Um, there is a lot of code in here, so I will make this notebook available online with some more kind of doc, or more, not more documents, with some more notes, uh, like these ones here, which kind of explain what the code is doing. Um, and hopefully you can look through that instead of me doing it live here, and you can look at that and hopefully understand what's happening. And if you don't understand the code and you want to understand it better, do come to one of our office hours um, and we can answer it more, answer any questions in that. But I want to, on that note, I do want to show you that we are making them, if you haven't seen this already, we are making all of these notebooks available online on our website. Yes. Um, and you can get to that website, it's planethunters.coffee. Um, you can then go to the tutorials and I've already gone to the intro to Python. These are just some of the, um, other tutorial videos that we've already put up um and if you then go to underneath each video there's a jupyter notebook and a collab button and you can click on either one of those and the jupyter notebook will download something onto your computer which is just the file that you then can save and if you have jupyter notebook installed on your computer you can uh, open it like that that's what i'm using um alternatively you can use collab for this you don't need to download anything we can actually try this it will take you to uh, collab is like Google Docs or Google Sheets. Yeah. Um, and the code is all already there and you can just run it. Um, so this is a different notebook. Uh, the yeah. one that we're from this video, unfortunately is not online yet because we're currently still filming it, but it will be online <laughs> sometime in the future and you will yeah. be able to see it then and download it Perfect. and follow along. Yes, so I think Nora has done a perfect job of doing a good summary of everything. So do visit our website, planethunters.coffee. Um, she's doing an excellent job of just putting it all in. So it's all there at your fingertips and we'll have this updated when we actually put the video up, obviously. Um, and continue to send your questions and comments into us. We are reading it. Thank you very much for the user who sent in uh, this question, which helped us to actually decide to do this series, kick that off. Um, if you're not on social media and you're just using our, our website, you can also email us. We're at hello at planethunters.coffee. Um, and we're looking at that. So until next time, thank you again for joining us. Thanks, Nora. Bye. Thank you.